Hello, happy Friday. We are about to go um, on with the 10 ways to sucker punch your brand. Just give me a few minutes to share to some people and tag some people and we will get started. Okay, so I am almost ready to get this party started. All right, I have got my Saturday, Friday night special with me. I haven't had this all week. Um, so this is my favorite drink in the whole wide world, which is Apple Crown. And uh, um, what is inside of it? Cranberry juice. So that is what we are sipping on tonight. So let me tag a couple of people and we are going to get started uh, with today's message. Facebook challenge so um, let me get to the screen so I can tag people Let's see if I can do this right figure out how to how to do this properly so you would think that I come on live like all the time now and I still cannot figure out how to how to tag people um, without it being a monumental event for me but nonetheless um, let me get started in just a minute and I've asked others to do it, and sometimes my phone shows me, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes my computer works, and sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so I am in Texas. For all of you people that know me, you know that I am in the Texas area. And so I am, like, um, significantly tied to the weather. So when, um, when it storms here, I get like all stuffed up. And so like today it rained all day. So my ears are all clogged up. I can't hear out of one ear and I'm a mess. And, um, but I will say I'm super excited about the fact that I spent, I don't know, maybe the last six hours working on, um, getting, you know, meeting the teacher, meeting, um, 
uh, we met two teachers today, had to go to two different schools, had football practice today, and this weekend is going to slice up to be a little piece of hell, as I refer to it, as I um, get kids to and fro where they need to be um, because we are in the heat of the um, sports center. So they've got, a, I don't know, some activity tomorrow. Um, and I'm just, this is my first weekend back from vacation. And you know, when you come back from vacation and all you really want to do is just nothing. Like I want to get caught up on my laundry. I want to clean up my house and I just want to do nothing, but that is not the way the weekend's going to turn out. So I am going to make some lemonade when I get a pile of lemons, because that's kind of how I feel the weekend is, is going to be. But nonetheless, we are going to get started. So I'm, I'm supposed to tag somebody though, and I still haven't figured out how to do this. So let me see if I can just get this one thing um, done and then we will get started. Um, so, you know, I woke up this morning to an inbox full of bullshit. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a live on this topic and I'm going to tell you exactly what the bullshit is because if you're an entrepreneur and if you've ever befriended people sometimes you probably wake up to bullshit too and so we want to talk about 10 ways that if you're doing these things that you're tanking your brand and you're making your brand look like shit so we want to avoid you doing that and we want you to make sure that you really have a really good marketing strategy in place and you're not doing things to piss your ideal clients off piss people off who don't know you and the first takes that they get in you about you and your business is some horribly bad taste. So we don't want that to happen to you or your business. All right. So last, last time, give me just one more second and then I'm going to um, get this, get it together. I'm going I'm to get it together. Okay. So I think I, I think, I think I've, I think I've tagged appropriately. All right. So I don't really know if this is going to be 10 exactly numbers. Hell, it may be 15. It may be five, but it's happened to me enough over the last, I don't know, six or seven weeks that I'm like, okay, you know, I'm the marketing boss pro and I need to make a really strong stance about the shenanigans business owners are doing to me. And I'm sure they're doing it to other people. So here it goes. Um, hopefully you've got a drink and you are enjoying this message that I'm about to give you, but it's going to be a little bit raw. So hopefully you can hang on for the rawness. So the first way that you are just jacking your brand up is if you think that your number one marketing strategy is, is to get in people's inboxes and to force, all right, sorry, had an Amber Alert come through my phone. Um, so the number one thing that I will say is if you are randomly inviting people to your business page and you don't know them from Adam, stop it. That's number one. That is the number one way to tank your brand, to tank you as a business owner to some unsuspecting soul who knows nothing about you. Just because you've become friends with someone and you are excited that it's a potential person who is a prospect, you still have to know, like, and trust. The person still needs to know, like, and trust you. And you still need to build that relationship. Just because you became friends on Facebook or just because they liked your, your page does not give you the right as a business owner to start forcing force feeding your message down their throat and force forcibly inviting them to your page without an invitation. So what does that mean? And you know, you've done it. So I'm going to, I'm going to use this as an example. So many, many, many years ago when I first started dating, right? As I'm sure many of you have stories about it. I remember first liking a boy and I would Get his phone number. Now, you have to realize that I'm 44, so this was a long time ago, right? We only had regular phones. There were no cell phones. There was no social media. It was, you got a boy's number and you called. They didn't even have call waiting back then, right? So you called and it, God forbid someone was on the phone. You actually got a busy signal and you had to call again and you just kept calling. So I remember 
I was thirsty. Like Jesus Christ, I was thirsty. So I'd get a boy's number or the boy calls me and I miss his phone call and I start to commence my mini stalking session where all I do is return his phone call like a million gazillion times to let him know that I received his phone call and I wanted to talk to him, right? Now, this was before caller ID and this was before the fact that people now know that you're mini stalking them, but I did that. I was thirsty, I was young, I was stupid. I didn't know that that's how, that's not how you get someone's attention or how you respond to someone, even though you like them and they may have shown some interest. And that is how we appear to business owners when we do the same thing. So number one way to tank your brand is, is you befriend an ideal client or you become friends with someone who may be your ideal client. They like your page. Somehow you get connected to someone who is your ideal client and you first, the first thing you do is throw up your information on that unsuspecting person without properly introducing yourself, properly getting to know someone or properly just being casual about the conversation, right? You got to keep your excitement down about the fact that they may be the perfect match for you or that you can solve all of their woes and all of their problems. You do not want to come across thirsty, desperate, or any of the above adjectives I've just mentioned when presenting yourself to someone new, a stranger. That's number one. Number two, if you decide to go into someone's inbox and you decide to do an introduction, do not throw up your product, your service, your, your brand on that person. You do not start a conversation with, this is what I want you to do for me. That is the number two way to tank your brand, to throw up all over your brand and to make your brand look like shit. If you have the audacity to go into someone's inbox that you don't know, the least you can do is inquire about them. That's the least you can do. The least you can do is be courteous and say, hello, how are you? Nice to meet you. Tell me about you. What makes you tick? Why are you who you are? How the hell are you? How's your family? How's your cat? How's your dog? Now, how's your fish? Before you start talking about yourself and all of the wonderful things about you, at least you can do is introduce yourself and do the right thing. So now many of you may not know what the right thing is. So this is the reason why I've decided to take it upon myself because I am so sick of seeing it personally done to myself. And I talk to many business owners where it's being done to them. So this is how a proper introduction goes. If you just meet someone, actually, I just had a proper introduction. Someone just pinged me. They befriended me. I want to say a couple of hours ago or earlier today. And she sent me a messenger and she said, hello, how are you doing? My name is so-and-so. This is how we know each other. I would love to connect with you to find out about you. Now, it may be an attempt to find out information about me so she can sell me something. I'm always suspect, as I'm sure you were suspect, as I'm sure as most of the population is suspect, but that's a proper introduction, right? She said, hello. She said a proper salutation. She said, how are you doing? She inquired about me. She introduced herself. She let me know how we know each other. She's not just completely a random stranger. She gave me that context and that connection. And then she, and she extended out a leaf of introduction like i'd like to get to know you so let's 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 get together and let's get to know each other right i'd like to find out about your business now i don't know why she wants to find out about my business but it doesn't matter i love to network i love to meet people i love to find out about other people's businesses and i love to find out about other people's superpower so i'm always open to conversation about other people's businesses and what they're doing in their business and how they're doing it that's how you stretch your mind and that's how you stretch where you are today is by inquire inquiry so I'm not turned off by strangers approaching me. I expect strangers to approach me, but there's a proper way to do that, right? So number two, if you're going to get into someone's inbox, be cool about it. 
Don't be nasty about it. Don't be disgusting about it. Don't be obtrusive. Don't be, I love big words. So just don't be any of those big words, right? Any of those nasty big words. What I want you to do is I want you to be proper. Now, I'm not going to pick on people who are younger than me, but I will say, I will use my daughter as an example. She is 19. So she is of that generation, of the social media generation, who she was, she was brought up to be a proper young lady in terms of introducing herself properly, but she often does not do that. And when I was growing up, you didn't call people after 10 o'clock, right? My kids are taught not to call people after 10 o'clock. People don't really have that sort of common courtesy anymore. But I will tell you that common courtesy should still be used in the social media world, in an online world. You should have some scruples about yourself in terms of how you interact with people. People are human and they want connection. They don't want to be thrown up on when it comes to marketing. And so that's why we want you to utilize social media properly. So now if you are on your own page and you are talking all about your services and your superpower and all the wonderful things that you are, and they are, they are consuming that content because they've made a conscious choice to do that. That is different than you invading their personal space, their personal messenger box, their, um, personal notification by inviting them to an event and you don't even know if they would be interested in that event. You don't know anything about them. Frankly, the only thing you know about them is their name and the fact that you've seen some information on their page. If you've even take the if you've even taken the time to do that. All right, number 3 way that you're taking your brand. Sloppiness, non-professionalism, non um just downright laziness in terms of your brand so let me use this as an example i work with a lot of beauty professionals that is where i started in terms of my marketing genius is in the field that i absolutely love which is the beauty industry so work with god i don't know hundreds of salon professionals and I remember this was last year sometime I was um, on a discovery call with a salon owner and one of the questions I asked her was you know describe to me what your ideal salon looks like and she described which many many business owners and many salon owners just and it's not even salon owners, business owners say I want an upscale salon i want to upscale this i want it to look professional i want it to be high-end you know that's the non-beauty professional way of saying i want it to be upscale is i want it to be a high-end business high you know i want to have high-end customers which really just means that you want to be able to charge whatever you think that you're worth without people haggling over your prices right and so I am, since I am in marketing and marketing is my thing, and what I always do is when I get ready to meet with someone, as I do with everyone I befriend, is I go and I check out their page, right? I do what most consumers are going to do. So I'm going to go to the page and I'm going to check out their business page. I'm going to check their business page out. If they don't have a business page, I'm going to check their personal profile out. And I even may go as far as to do a Google search to see what I can see because I want to see how they're representing themselves as a business. And so if your desire is to be upscale and you've got blurry graphics on your Facebook cover, you have vectors. So if you know what a vector is, it's an image um, that is either a caricature or some sort of non photo, you know, physical photograph. It's a drawn picture of an image. Um, that represents your salon, right? And let's just say this, let's say you're a black salon and the vector you've selected looks like, and, and, and you service your ideal client is African-American and that is primarily who you service, but the vector you've selected looks like a Caucasian woman with long flowy hair and she's got Caucasian features and you're saying you want an upscale salon. You know, I'm gonna kind of give you the eye like this, like really, you haven't even invested the, money to get the proper images to represent your brand, right? That's the number two way that you tank your brand is through your imagery, right? If you, and so I'm going to, I'm going to even take it here from an ethnic perspective because I um, was on a thread today and um, one of the ladies that I know, um, she posted something about, you know, I mean, because everyone is very sensitive about what's going on, what happened with Charlottesville. I'm very sensitive about what's happened in Charlottesville. 
I normally don't make a lot of political conversations in my lives, but I'm going to say this because I really thought that the post that this um, one entrepreneur did was really great is that she was saying, you know, as a Caucasian person, you know, what does that look like? What does white privilege look like? And so for me, I want to say as a black professional um, in a predominantly Caucasian environment, corporate wise, even in the online space, there's still not a lot of uh, people of color that represent high end coaches. You don't see a lot of that. I don't see a lot of brown faces when I see people advertising or marketing. So what I will say is this in terms of your images is if you know who your ideal client is and you know who with those demographics, let's just say that you want to be multicultural, then you should have graphics that represent a multicultural um, population. Look for women of color if that is your market. If you want to service other people than who you are and what you are then you need to have graphics that represent that. If you are a black person and you want to service a multicultural range of clientele, then you need to have imagery of white women, black women, Asian women, Hispanic women, as many different colors representative of the clientele that you want to have. And that goes both ways. If you are a Caucasian woman and you'd like to see more women of color in your business or you don't really care and you want to attract as many different types of cultures as you can, then you need to do your part to be representative in the imagery that you have, right? So number two way, that, number three, I don't even know what number we're on shit. All I'm saying is another way to tank your brand is, is whoever you're trying to attract, Make sure that you have representatives of them in the imagery that you do in your ads, on your covers, on in your graphics, in your posts, in your language, everything. You need to be able to speak the language, the multicultural language of all those people that you want to attract, all right? I happen to speak pretty vanilla. I grew up in San Antonio, learned how to talk in San um, in. California. My family is from um, New York. So, you know, when I was at the very small age of five, I went to um, California. And so I have a very middle of the road accent, right? I don't, I do say y'all. So people do know that I'm from the South. I do say y'all, but I have a very vanilla accent, right? So when people get on the phone, usually they can't tell if I'm black or white or whatever that the color may be. Um, and that's always been the case. But I will tell you, coming from a corporate background, coming into the online space, shaking that sort of corporate mentality and to be able to represent myself the way that I want to do and I want my brand to represent is what I continue to struggle with. So what I will tell you, if imagery is, is something that you don't think about, you should think about it because if I see something, I will tell you as a black woman, if I see a, if I see a picture of a company and I don't see any ethnic people on there, I think that they don't give a shit about me as an ethnic person, that they don't even give a shit enough to have representation of ethnic people. It doesn't even have to be another black person, just other ethnic people. If there's no ethnic people, then I assume that they're not ethnic friendly, right? I make an effort to be inclusive. And so I think if you want to have a brand that is all inclusive, that you need to make every effort to be all inclusive. All right. So that's, I think, number three way that you're taking your brand, right? So if you feel like you're being inclusive and you don't really have representation of all the people that you really want to show up in your business, your imagery is going to be the number one. The words that you use are another way. All right. So I sort of digress a little bit. So sorry about that. But the real, what the, the message that I'm trying to say is, is that, you know, I, I'd have beauty professionals tell me they want upscale salons or they want an upscale environment. And when you go to their representation, right, you go to their the face of their business, the online face of their business, They've got trashy looking sites. They've got trashy looking sites that looks like they built them in the dark, right? They didn't even take the time to have the lights on when they built them. And granted, I'm not trying to minimize do-it-yourself work because I have done it myself on a lot of things that I've done, but I still strive for a level of excellence that you should strive for too based on the type of brand that you want. So if you're attracting 
you know, $2 clients, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to ask, what does my brand say about me? When people Google me and they look up my name of my business or me, what do they find? Do they find non-excellent work? Do they find um, things that are not of excellence? Do they find things that are not of scale, right? So I want you to imagine what of scale, high end, or whatever vision you have for your business does it, is it represented by what you're showing? And if you don't know, then you should ask somebody. If you, um, you may think that it's upscale, but the reality is, is if you're not attracting the, attracting the type of client that you want, then it probably is not upscale. So I would take a look at your brand and make sure. And so what, what does it mean really, right? So if you're a marketing person and you hear these words and you think to yourself, well, what the hell does this really mean? What is a brand, right? Brand is not just your logo. It's your colors. It's your fonts. It's your imagery. It's your words. It's the, it is the entire feeling, emotional connection or feeling that is derived when somebody sees the name of your business, the colors, the, the pictures, everything that is your business and that is your essence, even through your talking about your business, that is your brand. And so you want to be really careful about what you put up on your brand. So let's just say this. Let, let me give you some further examples for you in terms of you, you being able to relate to what your brand is, is your brand is my brand is me. I am my brand. My brand is me, me speaking about the things that are important to me from a business perspective and even personally represents my brand. And so the same way for you. So just particularly in the social media realm, right? You can have a business name. Let's just say it's, you know, Joe's Crab Shack, right? And Joe, we can find out who owns Joe's Crab Shack nine times out of 10. We can find out who the admin is of Joe's Crab Shack and we can then go search his page. And so if there's some disconnect in terms of the what you want to present on your personal page and your business page. So let's say your business page is great. That would be the number four or five reason how you're tanking your brand, but your personal page is trash. You got bullshit on your personal page and you may think it's private and you haven't set the settings to really lock it down and people are seeing trash on your personal page, messiness on your personal page because you haven't locked it down. Then that's another way how you're um, tanking your, your brand. And so let's talk a little bit about personal versus business. So I did a live a couple of weeks ago about why you should build a business page. And it really is from an advertising perspective why you need to have a business page. But it really does set, set you apart from someone who is just advertising their business on their personal page, right? Um, it means that you really have taken the step of it's just like building a website, right? You make the decision to build a website so that you can be discoverable. And it just is another asset from a business perspective that you need to have, right? And so on your personal page there, it is a marketing strategy to just market on your, your personal page as opposed to your business page, right? Because of the way that Facebook has locked down things and, um, you know, you being able to get visible to your audience and your fan base, you know, that you have to pay for that and that's not organic. So people have said, okay, you know, bunk that. I'm going to just go to my personal page. Then you need to treat your personal page just the way you treat your business page. And what I mean by that is, is that you're not messy, right? If the only thing that you're talking about on your business page is your babies and your baby's daddy, <laughs> right? I said it, your baby daddy and all the messiness that's going on in your personal life on your personal page. Nobody wants to hear that shit. Nobody wants to know about that shit, right? That doesn't belong on social media, nor does it belong in the business on your, your semi business, personal business page slash business page. It doesn't belong there. Now, I do agree that you should have some personal stuff on your business page, on your personal page, if you are promoting your business on it, but the messiness, the Jerry Springer shit, the, you know, Phil Cunningham, and I do watch all of that, right? I love trash television, right? So nowadays it's not trash television, it's trash, you know, Facebook pages and social media pages because all that trash is no longer on television. It's now just right before us on social media. If you've got all that on your personal page, and you think it's not discoverable, 
particularly if you've not locked down your settings, it can be discoverable. So get rid of it. Stop tanking your brand that way. Stop putting all your personal business out on the world to see and then tying your per your business page to it and then wondering why you can't have the business that you want because you got a bunch of trash on there and people are going to find it. Okay, that's number number four or five. Who knows what number we're on. All right, so the other way that you are tanking your brand is, is and, and I have been guilty of this, is I am a, a, like super fast typer. Like I type like ridiculously fast, but I have a huge error rate, right? So my spell check and my error and my grammar and all of that, um, my grammar is okay, but I have a lot of spelling errors. I will acknowledge that. And so I really have to, because I move very fast, I really have to take the time to make sure that somebody proofreads my stuff before it goes out because it will be filled with spelling errors and filled with, and it's not the kind of spelling errors that spell check catches because it's just the incorrect usage of the word because I've typed it incorrectly. That does tank your brand, right? So if you're sending out emails, you're writing blogs and you're not, you're not writing, people are petty. I'm telling you, it's petty Friday, it's petty Thursday, petty Wednesday, petty Tuesday, doesn't matter what day of the week is. I have sent out emails that had grammatical errors in it and people respond back to me in the email, not great message, but you know what? I can't talk to you or even take you seriously because you had errors in your stuff. Now, I do think that's a little bit petty, but it's out there. So I will tell you if you are not taking the time to edit your work, you're not proofing your work, that will tank your brand. Right, because what people and your prospective clients will see in that is that if you don't take the time to edit your own work, that means you probably won't take the time to edit their work. And you won't take the time in sh to ensure that you're delivering high quality, excellent uh, products and deliverables back to them. So that could be another way that you're tanking your brand. All right, another way that you are tanking your brand or just making your brand look like shit and you may not even know it. It could be the way, the people that you associate with. So, you know, your grandma said, right? It's the company that you keep, right? So from a business perspective, if you are associating with yourself with non-excellent business partners or non, um, business partners that don't complement the the, the look and feel and the presence that you want and they happen to be friends of yours or you thought it was going to be a good relationship, but they have a trashy brand that will unfortunately rub off on you. So the company that you keep in terms of your partnerships are is very critical um, to your brand and making sure that you have partnerships that are going to be a win-win for you. Partnerships that are going to not only help excel your brand and excel the look and feel and the emotional connection that you want people to do. When you partner with another business owner, you want to make sure that they're of the same excellence that you're striving for, that they have the same level of excellence and the same level of um delivery that you strive for. So I want to make sure that you understand that as well. So partnerships and who you partner and who you um, associate with from a business perspective can absolutely rub off on you, good or bad, right? So if you you are able to get into a partnership with somebody who has an amazing following, has an amazing, excellent brand, that is going to propel you just as badly. If you hook up with someone who is horrible, that can also hurt you as well. So that would be number five, um, the way that you could be tanking your brand. Partnerships, poor partnerships, making sure that you don't have partnerships. All right, another way that you can be taking your tanking your brand um, and just really fouling it up is not doing anything towards it, doing nothing, right? So one of the things I said is, is that if you are, um, if someone Googles your name and they don't find you, well, what is that saying about you? That's saying that you haven't even taken the time to create a profile. You haven't even taken the time to create a presence, right? So if you were going to go out and you were going to 
open up a physical building. So I'm speaking to people who, I mean, cause I, I even know business owners who don't have, don't, don't, don't have profiles. They haven't taken the time to build out their profile, physical or online entrepreneurs. So, but I just want you to take it for a second. If you make a decision to go out and open up a store, right? You want to go open up a convenience store, right? I'm just picking something out of the air, right? You decide you want to go open up a convenience store. You would dare not open up that damn thing and not put signage on the front of the building. You want everybody to know that the convenience store is there, right? Because it's convenient, right? So you would put signage on there. You would go get a phone number, right? So people can look you up. Now, if you're older, like I am, I'm not elderly, but I'm certainly older, right? The only way that you could look at people was in the phone book. So the number one thing that you would do is you could get a business phone number. So you could be found in the yellow pages, right? Same thing. Same thing. It's no different. If you don't have a business directory online and when someone Googles your business and you're not there, what's that saying about you? It's saying you haven't even taken the time to be discovered. You haven't even taken the time to make sure that your profile is represented that you are represented right and so I will tell you if you just have a business if you just have a personal page you're not going to get discovered um, alone by that um, you you need to take the time to actually build out a Google um, profile you need to take the time to get a website so that you can have an asset that you can control the information that represents your business. Now, I do not believe that you have to have a website in order to do business because you can, but you do need to have some sort of site. I've said this many times and I will continue to say it. You need to either have a microsite, either in terms of a sales or an information page out on the, in the world wide, world wide web, or you need to have a web page, a website or something that represents who you are. Now, if you listen to my message yesterday about three ways to recover drive-by traffic, you want to be able to have a asset that you own. You can't put a pixel on Facebook, right? Because it's not your asset. It's Facebook's asset. So everyone who visits your, your business page, so to speak, if they don't like the business page, you've lost that traffic. That's not drive-by traffic. That's ghost traffic. Now, if you have a website and people come and they visit your website, we can track that traffic through a Facebook pixel, right? The website is your asset. It's yours. It belongs to you. You can put that code on there and you can track it, right? So not having a profile is something that's tanking your brand. Not being able to be discoverable when somebody goes and does a search is tanking your brand. So if you have no profile or you have very little profile or you have outdated profile, you haven't updated it in umpteen years or you've got some page from 1995, God forbid, I, I don't know if this is funny or just sad, but I Googled somebody and I don't remember. And what came up was their MySpace page. I'm like, are you freaking for real? MySpace? Like your MySpace page came up. That's what came up is I was researching someone and a MySpace page came up. So if you've got MySpace pages out there, my, my suggestion is go delete those bad boys right now and at least get yourself a Facebook page that has your name grilled all over it. So I shouldn't laugh because MySpace, I totally think that's hilarious. That was like the only thing I could find about this person was an old, you know, 2003 MySpace page. So, all right, not having a profile is another way that you're taking your brand. And I'm not just talking about one profile. I'm talking about a presence. I'm talking about a discoverable presence about you, right? That, you, that people, you Google your name and that is what people see, right? And it's funny because I did that to myself the other day and I was like, you know, my Facebook page comes up. I think my Twitter account comes up um, and I'm working on my website. So I've taken, I, you know, I've blocked that from SEO right now. So for that being discovered, and all of that, but like all of my social pages come up and, um, you know, even, even my salon, uh, I think is still, you know, my salon domain, my old salon or Lord beauty bar, um, that still comes up and all of the, the stuff that's associated with that. Right. But what I realized in when I did that search is, is that now that I'm really focused on the online, um, coaching space and training space that I really have a lot more to do to make sure that my profile is up to date and representative of where I am right now. And so that's what our team is going to be working with. We are rebranding our entire business. We, we've got an amazing new brand that's coming out. Um, 
We are changing the name of our company to SG from SG Consulting to a new name. We're coming up with a new brand. All of the products are coming underneath that brand. And when you Google Sunday Gardener, what you're going to find is a brand that represents the work that we're doing and our mission, right? Our mission to empower and free entrepreneurs from the struggle of getting their message out there to the world and getting their services in front of the right people at the right time. So that's the message that we're going to be doing. So I want to tell you I did it myself. You know, again, this is my superpower. I did the same thing I'm telling you. And I looked and I said, our brand is not representative of who we are now, who we are in 2017, going into 2018. So we need to make some significant changes. And so as a company, that's what we're going to be doing. Same thing with you. And what I will tell you with the amount of pace that we are operating in from a technology perspective, from an oper the way that we interact with people, that the it, it could it, there was a time that you could you could create a brand, and as long as you were still kind of doing the same thing, you didn't really need to make an overhaul. Often, right? You could have the same kind of look and feel and it be representative through the years. That's not the case anymore. The way that, excuse me, information is disseminated now and how quickly things are changing, you really need to probably do a brand reevaluation every, at minimum three years, at maximum, I would say, you would wanna start taking a look at what your business stands for, its mission, and making sure that you are up to date with technology, communication channels, the way that information is moving around, that you're up to date with that to ensure that you're able to get in front of the right client, that you're doing that probably every 18 months, right? That you're looking at your marketing strategy and your communication channels and making sure that your message is still the message that you wanna be um, getting out there in the way that you wanna be getting out there, 18 months, right? I mean, that's, 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 that's not very long, right? So the shelf life, of your mission and your brand and who you stand for and how you want to get out there needs to be evaluated every 18 months to 36 months. It's every three years. So I want you to take that with you. Like, so if you haven't done an evaluation of your mission, your brand and how you're represented out there in the, the online space, um, in a while, you want to make, you want to make sure that that's on your list and that is something that you're doing on a regular basis. All right. So not having a profile is another way that you're taking yourself. So, All right, I think we're in five. So another way that you're taking yourself, so we talked about partnerships, we talked about not, not even showing up, showing up poorly, being too thirsty, um, coming out, you know, coming out the gate, throwing up on people about who you are and not really even introducing yourself as a business owner. Um, and so another way that you are tanking your brand that you may not, and you know, we also talked about not being, um, not proofing your information and not um, making sure that you take the time to be of excellence um, is another way that you're taking your brand is not being consistent. And, and what does that mean, right? So your products are inconsistent with your mission. Your, um, your message is inconsistent with what you, what your ideal client is. Um, just everything about you is inconsistent. There's, you know, let's say, and I'll use this because it's simple. It's simple for you to understand, right? Your mission is to sell cat paraphernalia, right? And all you ever do when you get online is talk about dogs and the dog that you have and how much you love your dog. And all you're doing is you got your dog sitting in your lap and you've got pictures of your dog all around you, but you are selling cat paraphernalia. You're selling cat t-shirts and you're selling catnip and you're selling all this stuff that's cat related. But everything that's coming out your mouth is dog related, right? Same thing. So if your mission is whatever it is, right? Again, my mission is to free entrepreneurs from the struggle of their message and their ability to get in front of the right people, clients at the right time, right? That's my message. But if all I'm talking about is how to um, how to open up a business, right? That's not consistent. That's not consistent. 
If I'm talking about how to do your nails, right? I'm talking about hair extensions in my life. And I'm talking about, you know, whatever that's not related to the topic. It's inconsistent. So when people see me and they hear me, they're like, well, what the hell? Like, is she is she selling hair extensions? Is she a nail technician? Or is she a marketing trainer? Is she a marketing person? What is she doing, right? If there's inconsistency in your message, in your vision, and your delivery of that, when you come and represent it, or any person in your business represents it, that's tanking your brand, right? Because people won't know what to expect from you. They won't know when they interact with you what they're going to get. They have no idea, so they're confused. Confused people don't buy. They don't buy when the message is not clear. They don't buy and they don't engage if it's unclear to them what you do or who you do it for or why you do it or why it's going to solve their clients because they could not get access to you and the services and products that you provided. Same thing with on the online space. If you're not available and you're not visible to your ideal client and your existing clients for that matter, then you're not going to do anything good for your brand. So you can have a consistent message. You can be there. You can do all the right things. But if you're not consistently available to them in the way that they expect you to be and you don't know that, that will tank your brand as well. All right. So that's all I've got tonight. I think I've kept you on, guys, for like 20 or some odd minutes. So if I come up with some more, I'm going to throw them in here. I'll do another live tomorrow, and we'll talk about it some more tomorrow. But if you have any questions, you know, as always, feel free to reach out to me. So, hey, we are, we are, we are. Next week is the end of school. school starts. I'm so excited. I'm so super excited. All right, but we have two weeks left in the month. And so next week we have an amazing guest speaker coming on Tuesday night, Karen Fern. Um, and she's going to talk about abundance, lifestyle, and uh, how you can have all that you want um, all through making sure that you have the right mindset because what is going on in here dictates what comes out of here, how you live, how you act, and how you receive your uh, your life. Um, and the, the things that happen to you is all starts with what is going on between those ears. So we want to make sure that we have the right mindset. So I always love having mindset coaches come visit with us. And so she's going to be giving us a powerful um, message on a Tuesday. I do think that the primer went out um, this evening. So you'll be able to see that it'll be at, I believe it's seven o'clock um, on Tuesday. I also am doing a training on Thursday night. Um, and it is all about Facebook groups and how to market those Facebook groups. So if you do not have your own personal Facebook group and you have shied away from that and you've thought, oh, maybe that's not for me, um, it is a powerful tool to use as a marketing, excuse me, as a marketing um, platform for you to be able to reach people in the same way that you would reach them email. It's I, I always call Facebook groups um a um, email, you know, email tool on steroids, whereas you would do email campaigns and you would market to people through written word. Facebook really allows you to do both written and visual through its live functionality. Now, I did get an update from Facebook that they are launching slowly but surely they're launching um, Facebook TV. And so I'm super excited about what that means. What I did get wind of though is, is that that Facebook TV is going to be more like a Netflix subscription. So it's not going to be like um, YouTube where you can stream. Anybody can stream their episodes on YouTube, but Facebook is moving that way. I mean, Facebook is like world domination. It's like Pinky and the Brain, man. It's like Facebook, you know, Zuckerberg is like the brain. He's a little mouse, the big head. He's just trying to take over the world. So every time there's some opportunity for him to figure out how to do that, he's going to do it. And he's going to create some feature in Facebook that's going to keep us even further locked into his platform. So Facebook television is coming out. I tell you that because... You know, as soon as I get more information about that and how that's going to help entrepreneurs be able to get their message out in a mass a mass way, I will um, absolutely be doing some sort of training on that. But for right now, Facebook groups is that way and is that mechanism for you to be able to get your message out. 
um, to and really, you know, grow that group as large and as big as you want and really get active engagement um, and really get sort of hands on with your community. Um, and so I really encourage business owners to have their own Facebook group and to really nurture that Facebook community because that really is your platform for you to communicate with your tribe, to provide them value and really, um, you know, show up for the people that you service. And so um, that's what we'll be doing in that training. So I will also include that. That is on the top of this banner. Um, so if you look up at the um, top of either my business page or Marketing Boss Lounge uh, Facebook group, the link to registering, that is an actual um, Zoom training, it'll be recorded, um, so it's not a live because I actually will be showing you some stuff. I'll be showing you um, how to utilize the insights in Facebook groups, um, how you get some valuable information as an administrator in the group, um, and what you can do with that information to help you manage the group better. So that's really going to be all about Facebook groups. Encourage you to um, register for that. Um, if you have not joined my email list, I will also be sending out a notification about it in the email. So I will um, include the ability for you to join my email list um, in this uh, in this uh, up above uh, after I get off of here. Okay, so that's sort of the meeting announcements for this week. I just got back from vacation this week, so this is my first week back. And I will tell you again, I'm just excited to be back, but I am like so behind right so vacations are wonderful things for you to disconnect and reconnect to your soul but um i am so behind with my kids stuff i, I don't know where they're supposed to be and when they're supposed to be at it um you know sports wise school wise or anything else so i hope to by the next couple of weeks to get myself caught back up um so it's been a crazy week i really don't have any lessons learned you know what, you know, because I usually use Friday as kind of like, what did I learn this week? And like, you know, what will I do different? I think the biggest lessons learned that I, I have for this week um, is from, I told you guys, I think when I came back is that cruises are certainly not for my family, the way to reconnect their way to disconnect um, safely. So that was my biggest lesson learned is how to vacation with my family, not on a cruise. That, that was my biggest lesson. And then, um, you know, in preparation for this, I, you know, just talking about, you know, as I, as I come back from vacation and I'm reconnecting with, you know, you know, just the, the whole process of what I do for my business and my life. And I'm, you know, things, I guess, that are just so common that I'm starting to see because I've been away, I was away for seven days. Um, like the, you know, waking up to five or six, you know, invitations to people's groups that I don't even know who they are, right? And I know they don't know who I am because we've never had a conversation. So they may be following me, but they really don't know if I'd be interested in their message, right? Because what I decide to follow as Sunday personal is not necessarily what I would do for my business. So I very, I'm very protective of what I consume and what I let in my brain and in my mind um, to take up my time or whatever. So I really... Um, do you think it's obtrusive for people to just invite you to things and not even ask your permission to do that? So if I'm a, you know, perturbed by it, I know I've talked to many people who are also perturbed by it and they don't like that um, intrusion. So I think that's the biggest lesson is, is I, as I reconnect is that I've got a lot of different distractions going on, right? Messengers going off. I got, you know, I've got all these pings that I'm, I'm dealing with with a messenger. Um, you know, I've got a task place. I've got, you know, I've got all these things that I've got that really make it very difficult to stay focused and get one thing done. So over the next couple of weeks, what I will be working on is, um, trying to minimize my disruption so that I can focus on what I need to get done for a particular block of time or day or whatever the time frame may be so that I can be more effective. Um, so that is something that I, I used to do that very religiously. I kind of have dropped off on that. So that's my biggest lesson learned is coming from a vacation is the amount of distraction is, is huge. And you cannot let yourself, um, you can't let yourself get off task by all the many ways that people will distract you, <laughs> um, you know, legitimately or illegitimately in terms of the way that they get distracted. So um, I am back on the road to blocking out 
as many of the distractions as I can in favor of getting the, the things that I need to get done on a daily basis, weekly, monthly, or whatever, um, to ensure that I'm more productive um, when I need to be and less productive doing the, you know, adhering or, um, uh, you know, falling victim to the distractions that be, um, befall me. So with that, that is my Friday night message. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your drink. I've enjoyed mine and I will be talking to you all next week. Have a fabulous week. If your kids are already back to school, I hope they had a great first week. If they start next week, I hope they have a first great, uh, great first day. You all have a great evening. Have a great weekend. Talk to you soon.